matter. You just want the bees to be active. So you want the temperature, daytime hives to be highs to be at least 60. Um, you just can't extract from the frames that are in the deep. So if we treated this and had honey supers on it, we could still extract out of the supers. We just couldn't extract out of this brood chamber. You're supposed to do uh, two strips. It's much, very much like the uh, hard chemicals. Um, uh, the hard chemicals, which uh, I'll go over in a minute. Actually, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to back up. I got a little bit ahead of myself, and we'll go ahead and go through the hard chemicals. <clears throat> so, for hard chemicals, like I said earlier, these are the synthetically created chemicals, so you don't really find these like on plants and things like that. So this is uh, Apivar, the active ingredient, and this is uh, Amitraz. It was uh, used, Amitraz was on the market, legal for use, and then I think it was EPA or one of the federal agencies anyway, that pulled off Amitraz off the market. The commercial beekeepers pretty much continued use even while it was off the market. They got it uh, marketed for, for uh, non-beekeeping things in the form of tactic and would mix it illegally and use it in their colonies and uh, resistance is a concern with all all these treatments but uh, they found that they haven't really found resistance to uh, to amitraz even though they would you kind of expect to find it um, another treatment is checkmite is amitraz still off the market or is it it's on the market as apivar they pulled it back okay. on the market and even though it's been used for so long they haven't really found um, resistance to it. So why would there be resistance to the synthetic ones and not the natural? Because of their mode of action. Um, typically they work through like blocking sodium ion channels and uh, it's just an easier way to resist versus something like <clears throat> that causes the mite to desiccate or breaks down its skeleton. Kind of like a, a cockroach can't really breed resistance to a hammer. It's a similar type thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> so this is uh, checkmite, the active ingredient, and that is kumafos. It's an organophosphate. Um, organophosphates tend to stick around. They don't break down very readily um, like the uh, amitraz breaks down. Um, and they've definitely found high levels of resistance to, uh, to uh, kumafos. The other one is apistan. When I started in bees, a long time ago, this is what everybody used. They said it was about 97% effective. That was printed and published in most of the, you know, catalogs selling it. But um, now it's probably maybe as much as 97% ineffective because of the resistance that uh, the, the mites have built up to this stuff. Um, what happens is every time you you treat with one of these things, it kills some percentage, hopefully a high percentage of the mites. And the remaining mites are the mites that for some reason can kind of withstand these treatments. And then those mites have babies and then they're babies. And, and so you're basically breeding for resistance because you're propagating those mites that can take these treatments. So the way these work is you're supposed to apply uh, two strips, typically for five frames of brood. And so what I do is I just, uh, if you have 10, you know, a brood chamber with 10 frames, I just smoke it pretty good. And I look down in there and kind of try and find where the brood nest is. Now here you've got so much honey I can't tell. So I'm just kind of going to move the frames, maybe pull a frame here. So I've got brood out to there. Got brood over here. So I'll go ahead. I think, uh, this frame had had the brood, and this frame had the brood. So I'll just go inside of these frames, tree here, a tree here. And so what this does is kind of gives us a distribution of the uh, chemical throughout throughout the brood nest. Um, you want to treat in the brood area because that's where most of your mites are, just like you sample in the brood area. You can hit more mites. And I just kind of stagger them just a little bit to kind of, like I said, help distribute it throughout the brood nest. If you had a second brood chamber, um, I'd probably put a strip here and here to kind of offset and spread throughout that whole area because you'd get closer to 20 frames of brood. Okay, so you would put one, you'd put, so if you 
said two brew chambers, you would use four strips. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Exactly. Um, if I had a nuke, I would just do one strip in the center of it. And how long do those stay there? Um, it depends. I'm kind of generalizing through these three hard chemicals because they, they're all plastic strips. They work about the pretty similar. Um, they stay there generally around 50 days. I think uh, Apostan maybe like 42 to 45. This was like 40 something to 56 days. And I can't recall on the Kumafos, but about <coughs> about 50 days. The label is the law, so follow that as far as how long to leave it in. It is important to pull it out, to not leave it in longer than the label says, because then you're really you're giving a sublethal dose to the mites. So it's you're you're still there's still chemical on there. There's just not enough to really kill and knock down the mites like you want. So you're just giving them a low dose over a long period of time and really breeding resistance. So pull it out and put it in the trash can uh, when you're when you're done treating. You do this just once a year? Uh, depends. It depends on when you hit the threshold. You want to look at your thresholds. Um, something else you may want to consider is uh, varying your treatment. So like if I do uh, Apivar in um, let's say July or August, when I come back maybe it'll be cooler and I can do uh, a soft chemical like Formic or Thymol um, and that way I'm rotating my treatment. If you just keep doing you, know, you do apistin every single time, um, you know, they can become resistant, so that's why you want to vary your treatment. And there's no set way to vary. You can vary every other time, do something different, every year do something different. Those things are kind of up to the beekeeper. And this is the one you use? This is Apovar, this is what I use.